Oh, and relative, you can't yeah. tell. Yeah, that's what's so good about the um, four times by it, just, it makes it so pronounced exactly what you're seeing. Now, what's going to be crazy later on, gentlemen, is that there's going to be a ship right here where my cursor is. There's going to be a ship that you're going to see come in and out. Just It's oh so subtle. A dark band where the hull is all compressed. And down here where this line is, you're going to see its inversion here. Just going to give you a heads up. I'm going to speed this up a little bit. See if I can see when it first comes in because I, I, I didn't ever look at when it first showed up. You know, uh, uh, Travis, in your observations, if you just bumped up the shadows a slightly, uh, a slightly I can't just... do it right now with VLC, VLC no, no, tanks. No, no, I... okay. No, no, I know, I know. I'm just saying if you just did, it would help your observations quite a bit. Yeah. Just a slight bringing up of the shadows. It will I, just provide you more detail. I hear you, bro. I, I would need some kind of more power. I, I've got a, I've got a four-cylinder. <laughs> I need a Hemi. Okay, well, I'll, I need I'll, a Hemi. I'll tell you. I'll tell you. You can download DaVinci Resolve. It's a free program. Okay. It's not uh, too intensive, but it's free for, for PC and, uh, and uh, Mac. It's a professional editing application that will allow you to add color easily and an export a video to your desktop all for free. Okay. You don't ever have to you don't ever have to use VLC ever again. DaVinci Resolve. DaVinci. I you know, it's it's so hard for me to try to uh, learn a new program, but I've I've looked I, I know about DaVinci at least by name, so I'll try to uh, I'll try to spend some time doing that and see if I can uh, get it to where, uh, it to it, where in it, my experience it's very heavy on your, uh, on your if you're gonna if you're gonna do color grading yeah but if you're just bringing you're just bringing up the contrast and you're running it through into delivery it should be fine yeah travis if you're just looking for on the fly video manipulation picture manipulation that doesn't take up a bunch of weight on your um you know on your computer km player km capital k capital m player is a really good one I found. Um, it does all sorts of uh, rendering too, and all sorts of stuff. Uh, no, no disrespect to data, but I'm sure that DaVinci thing is probably a little bit more involved than you're just looking for a good player that on the fly you can change, you know, certain aspects and shit. So it supports all formats. It's a Korean player um, made out of South Korea, and you know the Koreans do. They do it right. So. Okay, I just uh, jotted those both down, so I'll try to try to see what I can do with those. <clears throat> it's interesting for me watching this image for the first time. I mean, I would think that was a boat floating along in the water because it just seemed to be bobbing up and down. And again, if anybody has anything you want to say, just uh, jump in anytime. Just just increasing the magnification, the more the uh, the more the uh, atmosphere increases in the temperature differential or the inversion, it looks like it's magnifying more. Um, like like um, not not. It's like a compression, magnific. I don't know if it's mag compression or magnification okay. is the okay. right adjective, but. All right, I'm sorry. I just saw the flash right here. Okay. So if you can see this dark band right here, yeah. this I is where this is where the ship. I'm gonna back up uh, this um, VLC. When I backtrack, it goes ten seconds back. Okay, so this is ten seconds back. Okay, so right now there's nothing there. 
right there was a white flash right there was a red flash the ship just came in right here is the ship right here is the ship right there right there right there that is a ship okay and now it's gone right internal reflection right there internal reflection gone the black hole of Lady Aether Band. Like if you didn't know there was a ship there, you would think it was just a wave. Yeah, Viking. sure. Or, yeah, sure. Yeah. And so now we can see the depth color change right here. The color, the depth is changing. We've got development here. It's not developing at the full, it's not developing at the horizon. It's developing down here. Okay, look, right here. This is the ship. That that band right there, that is the inverted hull of the ship. And the ship is right here. Here's a white little strip right here. Just keep your eye here. Just kind of float it around. You'll see it dance. Look at this right here. Boom. Look at that. Look at that. So, what I'm going to what I'm going to suggest is is that even though we're seeing the limit here up here, I think that it's actually back here. So, we've got this like angular projection. Oh, well, you know what? Actually, it goes out right here. It goes out right there. Yeah, I really like the uh, the PH video, the, the, the video they posted um, with the, um, the PhD physicist. Was he a physicist? What was he again? Uh, you're going to have to give me more than that data. What do you, what do you mean? Well, he just he used a little uh, story regarding um, the Israel Israel Israelis looking off into the Red Sea and seeing people oh. drown. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. As a as a as an anthropological uh, uh, <laughs> explanation. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that was uh, Doctor Greenler. I I just about just kicked a cat when uh, he did that explanation. And, and not only that, he told you that refraction does hide the bottom of stuff, so you do. Yeah. Have... Oh yeah. Oh yeah. I know, man. Yeah. 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 I appreciated your comment. Okay, now the ship is now moving right to left behind the platform. Watch it to the left. Here it comes. Yeah, that just clearly shows you that's in a straight path, man. And just the refraction is buried in, burying it. It's quite obvious. So this is the end of the first installment. I had, uh, let's see what I had. Crazy Ether 1, 2, 3, and 4. So I've got four sections. That one's 12, that one's 6. And that one's six. I think at this point I had so much data on my uh, SD card that I could only do five to six minutes. But but let's look at let's look at the final result. Let's look at the last six minutes. Okay. So here's is, a here's a question for you, Travis. Is uh, now that you've done the aquatic uh, interpretation of refraction, when are you going to go to the desert next? Well, on my way to California to harvest cannabis. <laughs> I'm going to stop at uh, the Bonneville Salt Flats and do what I can in a, in a couple days. Uh, eight miles easy. Well, longer than that, actually. I did a little bit of, um, I did a video on a bullet, a bullet, um, 
the, the, the salt flats you just mentioned there. What are they called again? Well, not Bolivia. What is it called? Bonneville. 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 Yeah. Bolivia salt flats. Um, I did a a, a, a data uh, like a Google Earth um, data between two points to get the the to get the um, elevation right the the um, yeah elevation yeah. Uh, get if you do that, make sure you bring that with your thing and drive your car across the desert with the uh, protractor on it. Once you have your car calibrated from the point of position from the data, draw along that line and see if the protractor actually picks up the dip in elevation of the desert. Well, the trick about uh, the trick about the and then Bonne what it does. Yeah, sorry, go ahead. Well, I was just going to say the trick about the Bonneville salt flats is that the salt, the the flats themselves, are almost like a very fine very very fine sand and you can get uh, uh, dug down and if you get dug down it's like an arm and a leg to get yourself towed out of there so oh, okay because yeah, I did see people driving there right I know but look. I know but I just don't want to get stuck I don't know it well enough but I hear what you're saying absolutely I hear what you're saying it, the, the reason why I would just talk about that observation with the um, protractor is that because it's not, uh, you know, it's going to match the same as Google Earth. If you're going down a certain degree, up a certain degree, you can pretty much see the match data. And why it's significant is because it's just it's just measuring your distance and elevation is exactly uh -huh. what you okay. do when you. It's exact. Anyway, it's it's something you can do part of your. No, I you I, I hear you. Desert, but, I hear you, man. But listen, you know that's that's why I've got to go fund me. Because that that kind of time, to, to, to take that kind of time to orchestrate that kind of uh, event and make sure that you're doing everything right, that, that time is money these days, you know? Oh, yeah. Oh, I, I get it, buddy. I get it. You, you live in the United States, which is uh, very uh, eclectic in its uh, landscape. Um, you know, you can literally be in the desert uh, one minute and on a snowy out the next. Yep. Yeah, yeah. In a short, in a short few hours. So it, it's definitely, um, you, you have a lot of land to work with, a lot of, a lot of places. I don't have anywhere near the freedom you have. Uh, and then where I'm located as well, I'm in the middle of the mountains. Wait, so I don't you, have this. Yeah. I'm just backing up real quick. Watch the, uh, if you can see the methane burner here to the left is, is, is burning. Watch the dance of the, look at that. You see that? You see that zigzag? Mm -hmm. It's a little heat wave passing it, right? Something. But what I wanted to point out right now was, look at how much of the base we can see and how much was compressed, you know, 30, 40 minutes before. We couldn't even see. So that whole... So is there an inversion going on there then? Well, I, I it's possible. It's possible right here. It looks like but, it comes in on itself. It's... Right here, it's it, not a it's not a light inversion though. It's just a it's just a temperature inversion because all you I, see is it. I don't know. You, it it well, could be it could if, be that there is if, it, there is less magnification, so the, the the horizon will be farther away. So the 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 amount of compression is uh, in in height is min is less. The bottom of this uh, compression. Yeah. The, one of the reasons why um, data, I would say, I don't think that there is a, a, an inferior mirage is because it looks to me like this right here is the top rigging, uh, the, the, the base of the platform with the, with the pylon or you know whatever you want to call it, the leg. This, to me, doesn't look inverted. All it's, of, not an, it's not an, an inferior mirage at all, not one bit. It's the actual platform itself. It just what I see is is a slightly uh, temperature inversion between the water and the the arm, but then it's not consistent. So you, as you see, the arm or the platform moved, and now th that particular wave is not as a, you know it's not as um, look as as the arm moves, it straightens. So foreshortening is an effect that you should look into uh, which straight uh, objects or slightly bent objects when they're compressed they'll bend more significantly. So I'm just looking at that platform and I don't see uh, uh, 
because you can see the land behind the uh, rig. On the and right, so, yeah. Yeah, so there I don't see an, an inferior mirage at all. In fact, I just see um, a heat wave, really. And um, that's just a heat wave, man. That's all it is. And the, obviously the horizon is just going to be your angular, your refraction limit on your lens of your camera. Because that's how all these images are put into the sensor is via refraction into a cone. So uh, whether you've done enough into that um, observation based on weather temperature, because there has to be, for instance, if you put a camera on the ground, like I've told you before, and you zoom out, it, the, the, ground, you, the ground will rise into oh, the yeah. camera. Most definitely. Yep. Yeah. So, so that, effect, that, that effect uh, has a limitation. Um, the refraction effect has a limitation. That's why I have to tilt it up, right? So it's it's just this optical illusion based on that limitation, uh, and that's rel relative to the angle. And obviously, in this situation, you're not getting much refraction. You're just seeing heat wave. That's what I see. I don't see very much refraction there at all. Unless I'm wrong, because I can see the island behind it. So all I see is water and a heat wave. So the, again, uh, because this is a video, it does not give you the data of your focal length, but <clears throat> based on w how I normally shoot, uh, I'm going to suggest that that is a uh, a full optical zoom. And now here, I've got a boat that is on the horizon. Okay, I've got a boat that's on the horizon, but above this right here is a mm, how would I want to say this uh, at least at this point right here okay so look if we're looking up here at the Santa Cruz Island and we can see the topography here right here is where I would say the magic starts right there so that all of this right here if we could wipe away that refraction, the water would go up, and this is where the shoreline is. That's my working interpretation. See, where do you see refraction here in the sense of the um, uh, inferior, inferior mirage? Where do I right. see, where do I see refraction? See, right there is ref refraction now, right? I mean, I'm not talking about the uh, horizon line caused by it. I'm talking about the mirroring effect, the internal well, refraction, right, or internal reflection that we see. So, okay. so, yeah. so there are two classifications uh, of mirage: inferior and superior. And then there are four classifications of non-miraged phenomena, which is towering, stooping, looming, and sinking. Those allegedly don't have a, a, an inverted image. But I, I have a hard time not saying that, that everything that we're seeing in this image is refraction. Everything. To the well, well, technically, technically it is. Okay. Yes. Everything you see is refraction, okay. technically. Okay. Uh, because it's going through a lens, it's refracted into those points, into a cone. So that technically is all true. It is all fundamentally based in refraction. Okay. So based because on... It's coming in, it's because it's coming into the lens of your eye, right? We're talking about uh, weather conditions. Uh, let's, in this case, call it energy exchange, because that's what's causing the effect, is the temperature difference between the air and the surface of the water. And if that is at greater extremes, you tend to have greater refraction. Would you agree? I I don't disagree. I don't disagree. How about that? So you agree? <laughs> no, I, I don't have enough information. I, I can't say one way or the other. I don't have a problem with what you're saying. I just don't have enough information to affirm it with uh, a kick to the shin with, with pointy boots. See the the thing I'm noticing a similarity between the desert and the ocean. Hold on, let me let me say this real quick, and I'm going to push play. But let me say this real quick. So 
again, this point here is the actual horizon, not here. And we've got an inverted image here. But if we follow this line right here, we can see that right here at this point, I would say this is an inverted image and this is like right here. This part right here is this part right here. So this part that's right here is farther in the distance. That's why it's higher up. And this is closer to us, which means this is why it's, it's uh, fold line, vanishing line is lower down. So uh, the point though is that from this point of the horizon to that point is physical distance and we need to know how far that is. Just like from right here to right here, I would want a ship, I would want a boat right here and I'd want a boat right here. And I think we could do it. It's just it's just the freaking uh, sweet spot timing of all of, of all of that stuff. But go ahead. Yeah, I mean, guaranteed. This is this that they'll that area that you're witnessing in the human mind for the average observer is not even understanding what foreshortening or the compression effect that's actually happening. If you, for shits and giggles, I don't know if you've done this, but if you've been down at the ocean and you filmed buoy, buoy points and you can line them up in a row and they're about, let's say, 2,500 uh, feet apart, maybe 3,000 feet apart, and you got three in them in a row and you zoom in along that line, those three buoys will appear very close to each other. Now, in the same regards as that your internal reflection or refraction here that you see, that's happening sometimes over two, three, four miles yeah. in a compressed in a compressed foreshortening effect due to uh, the way optics work, right? Yeah. So that also exaggerates. Um, well, it has to exaggerate the effect, right? Uh, that's why it's it's um, now. Here, here's the thing, too. If you were to can I stop you just real quick? Yeah. So earlier, earlier. The horizon stopped right here, and uh, I could go back and show you, but there was this. I think this is a channel marker of some sort. I think that this has to be some sort of uh, marker for the ships not to come closer to the, uh, the platform. But in the video before this, this horizon was not... This horizon right here is beyond this, and we did not have that before. We had the horizon down here with this marker right on the horizon and then we could see what we thought was sky. So all I'm doing right now is just making note of the fact, I just took a screenshot. I'm gonna have to go back to the previous video and take a screenshot where we could see the entire platform just like we do right now, but this is where the horizon stopped and we had no visible water, but this is clearly beyond the uh, platform. There you go. Yeah, I think you have another black swan. 